This is not a review I wanted to do. I'd rather have a colonoscopy than do this review. And I had one just four months ago. Um, you know, this, this was supposed to be our saving grace. This was supposed to right so many wrongs uh, gamers all over the world had to endure in the past year. And the RTX 3060 was supposed, again, to bring next generation gaming performances at a budget price. Nvidia even uh, had modified its BIOS to, to cut in half its crypto mining ability, so to protect the gaming community from evil crypto miners, which by the way are everywhere surrounding us and could even be living in your own house. Watch out! So what did go wrong? Where did it go also wrong? Well, today we are reviewing the GeForce RTX 3060 Gaming OC12 from Gigabyte, the most anticipated product release of this quarter, raising the hopes of an horde of diligent gamers, only to crush them even more, if that was even possible. And most importantly, uh, um, uh, my doctor, after my colonoscopy, took the time to explain to me how wonderfully uh, well prepared uh, uh, that colon was and how beautiful it is. The, the column, my column, just apparently a beautiful, beautiful column. So the NVIDIA 60 series is usually NVIDIA budget bracket video card. It's, it's, it's most sold product and uh, for example, it's 1060, which was released five years ago, is still the most used video card in the world today. So getting the 3060, it, it's a big deal. There's a lot at stake here, especially in a time where there's uh, absolutely no video card stock unless you're ready to pay triple uh, MSRP pricing. But worry not, Nvidia has heard us and is about to change our gaming lives. 3,500 amper architecture CUDA cores, 12 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM, a deliciously low $329 MSRP, and the promise that this card would not be able to be used for proper Ethereum mining. Oh boy. Is this a hard dream to wake up from? Now, starting with the obvious. The RTX 3060 Gaming OC12 comes with a rather large and imposing 3 fans edition. It stands at 2 slot tall, so smaller and easier to install than its more expensive 3060 Ti sibling. It has 4 display outputs, capable of supporting no less than 8K gaming at 60 frames per second or 4K at 120 frames per second, but obviously these are um, inherent. Uh, display output ability doesn't mean that the card can sustain such performances on modern gaming. I'll get there later on. Now let's note the presence of two HDMI 2.1 port, perfect for people who wants to both power a uh, monitor TV and their VR headset without having to uh, constantly swapping and disconnecting cable around. Now spec-wise, it is powered by a GA106 GPU, 8 nanometer written die, featuring more than 13 billion transistors organized in 3,584 CUDA cores, 120. 12 tensor cores for our AI DLSS abilities and 28 ray tracing cores. The good news is that we have twice more the amount of CUDA cores and even 600 more cores than available on its much more expensive RTX 2080 sibling. So again, on paper, this looks really, really good. Clockwise, Gigabyte has overclocked our GPU to 1867 MHz, about 90 MHz above stock clock, which is quite a lot. Add to that an unprecedented 12 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM bust at 192 bit with a net result of 360 gigabyte per second of memory bandwidth slightly more than on its RTX 2060 predecessor. Now to power all this we have no less than 850 amps phases, 6 for the GPU, 2 for our memory models. Obviously more than you'll ever need to run this kind of video card so again you will have some real overclocking potential thankfully with the RTX 3060. Now, despite an impressive VRM and power delivery, uh, the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Gaming OC is, how to say, impressively uh, a power and energy efficient, idling at only 16 watts and inputting about 175 watts whilst gaming, which is really, really good and 50 watts less than its TI variant. So I would recommend no more than a, a 500 watt power supply unit on a build which would be running this card, which is at least there a budget plus. But where Gigabyte really shined 
with its RTX 3060 gaming OC is in its cooling abilities. We have this beautiful large and two slot tall thin stack fed by three long and never ending copper pipes. It does an impeccable job at radiating most of our GPU heat away. In addition, it is dressed by three 80 mm Everflow fans, which thanks to its dual ball bearing can last twice more than our usual sleeve bearing. For the maintenance, removing them was rather easy and straightforward. After a full hour our stress test, the capacitors showed an ice cool temperature of 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. And the GPU did equally good, uh, with a full synthetic load for an hour of stress testing it never went beyond 70 degrees Celsius, which is equally impressive. And, and you can uh, easily explain that by uh, uh, the fact that the card combines a rather premium, tall and well-populated Finare air block and those three 80 minute 18 millimeter fans, which do rotate in opposite directions to maximize the airflow. And it does so almost silently. The fans stop spinning when GPU temperatures fall below 55 degrees Celsius, ensuring silence when you engage in a lower intensity activity on your desktop. And when they do spin, well, they're almost silence, giving me a barely noticeable 35 decibels when let on auto in the midst of gaming. And obviously, full credit and kudos to Gigabyte for this. Now, gaming performance-wise, well, it was definitely underwhelming to remain polite. I ran the usual benchmarks and, and used uh, several different graphics engines from different games to make sure that we had a real realistic idea of what this video card could do. Starting with Cyberpunk 2077 at high rate racing and high settings was playable at 1080 but started to show some faiblesse as soon as there were some interactions like receiving a phone call. Frames dropped from 50 to 20 which was really, really Yucky to see. Watch Dark Legend and Call of Duty Cold War with some ray tracing and high settings at 1080 were okay, but nothing really extravagant. But what really put it together for me was the 3D Mark scoring, which placed the 3060 in par with its predecessor, the 2060. So basically, despite having some real specs upgrade, it does not really act and performs any better than its two-year-old predecessor, the RTX 2060, which is so telling. The reason why is hard to pinpoint, but my personal, uh, how to say, my personal intuition brings me on two different directions. Either the BIOS hack that Nvidia tried to impose onto the video card to limit the, the crypto mining hash rate is messing around with all the things in the video card and limiting uh, uh, its frame per seconds in game performances, or the 192-bit bus, memory bus, which bottlenecks uh, any kind of performance exchange between the memory and the GPU itself. If we had a 256-bit 8 gigabyte DDR4-6, it would have been a much different story than 12 gigabytes on a 192-bit memory bus. We would have something much closer to the 3060 Ti performances than this third of a video card. I'm sorry. So why a 3060 come with 12 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM? That makes no sense. Well, a little bit. A 192-bit memory bus can either support 6 gigabytes or 12 gigabyte of DDR6 memory. And I think that Nvidia pushed from 6 to 12 gigabyte on this card because they were aware that AMD was going to go for 10 or 12 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM on their incoming budget card, the RX 6700. So it's a bit of a rushed decision that Nvidia seemed to have done there because in all appreciation, it really did not help the card performance-wise. Now, one kind of individual is still very happy to see that much memory, obviously, and I'll let you guess, crypto miners. And that is why Nvidia tried uh, so hard, bracket, so hard, uh, to throttle the video card by modifying its bias. So out of the box, normally if you get an RTX 3060 today, uh, if you try to crypto mine Ethereum with it, you only get about 24 to 25 mega hash. But obviously, crypto miners within a day of the release of the card find a way to bypass those limitations. And today we find that the RTX 3060 can mine and 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 
hash, a mighty 50 mega hash, 50 mega hash per second, making it one of the most profitable video card out there. In conclusion, well, what do you want me to say? Uh, the RTX 3060 gaming OC 12 would have been a, a, an acceptable 1080 gaming card if it was one priced really at $329 instead of $750 US dollars that I paid to get it because I went through the same hassle as you did as waiting in front of my website as at the minute of launch and seeing it completely disappeared uh, but it makes me sick to my stomach to think that people would have to pay that much of the money for that kind of card. This is a price of a 2080, which actually would give you real 4K gaming performances. This is not worth a single penny of what I spent, and that really pisses me off, and that's why this review is so hard for me to make. But on top of this, it does not bring you any kind of real advantages gaming-wise if you compare it to the 2060 or the 2060 Super. Sure, it'll give you a 5% maybe performance gain towards the 20 like compared to the 2060 but really is that what two years of development will give you 750 dollars is that all you can do nvidia now i really do believe that nvidia has decided to take its all profit strategy to a new direction to the profit of crypto miners and to the depend of us, the gamers. And pretending anything else when you see how they've been releasing any of the video card of the 3000 series would be just hypocritical. Because the only people who really will benefit from this card are crypto miners. Because this is by far maybe the best crypto mining card when you uh, look at how much electricity it takes and how much crypto mining value it outputs. 12 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM will output 50 mega hash of crypto mine, of mining power on Ethereum, which is obviously a lot for 175 watts. And, and, and Nvidia should just be owning it because right now they're trying to cover their tracks and they really do it badly. When they say, oh, we've done our best trying to uh, throttle the crypto mining through bias, that is complete BS because Guess who has released a beta driver, a beta driver on the market to, to unleash the full crypto mining ability of this video card? NVIDIA! They said it was a mistake, but of course now it's all over internet. You can go on any Myra uh, server and download the, the beta driver and it'll work just fine. So it really is a difficult thing to see for somebody who loves NVIDIA products as much as I did. But that's what they're doing. And I cannot in good or, or, or in conscience, in good conscience, advise you to upgrade from an RTX 2060 to an RTX 3060, even if it was at MSRP. It's that, that that's that bad. I would really, uh, um, urge you to stay where you are and see what AMD is going to come up with because right now this is not where your money needs to be.